Hey everyone, so today I am making a video all about writing a personal statement to graduate entry medicine. Now this is going to be a write with me video and that's essentially going to be me filming my entire thought process of how I go about planning my personal statement and kind of just talking through everything with you as I'm doing it. The reason why I'm making this video instead of just sharing with you my personal statement is one, because I haven't actually finished writing it yet, so this video is literally hot off the grill. And the second reason being that because I am also applying for medicine in this year for 2019 entry, um, I didn't want to put out my full statement whenever it's finished because I don't want any kind of um, accidental plagiarism or I guess non-accidental plagiarism to happen in the year where I'm also making an application. So I guess let's just get straight into it and go through a very basic structure. There is no set structure to writing a personal statement but I guess just to make life easier for me and to help me collect my thoughts, I decided to divide it into four parts. The first section is essentially the section where you explain to the admissions tutors why you want to do medicine and I guess the aim is to try and make it as captivating as possible. The real and honest and true reason why I want to do medicine is because I chose a science route, I followed a path towards translational cancer medicine and I was introduced to a lot of clinicians and patients and nurses and research staff and the multidisciplinary team and I fell in love with it and I realised that I think I would like to make an impact on the, pa the patient's lives through being a doctor and not necessarily just doing research in the background. So that's my reason and I would kind of, I guess when I come to write this, I will put that in a nice eloquent little paragraph with a little bow on it. At least I hope to. <laughs> Now for you guys, it could be completely different. Jack, for example, talks about his own experiences of the NHS. Kenji, who by the way made a really good video all about his personal statements, I'll link it below. He talked about the fact that he grew up in a third world country and experienced what it was like for people to not have access to healthcare and therefore he wants to be a doctor and try and provide that. And I've heard lots, I've heard, <laughs> I've read lots of personal statements with really great introductions and they have always been the ones that have been very personal and very <clears throat> true. Now section two is a really good place to either talk about your academics or give an overview of some of the work experience and the shadowing and the volunteering that you've done. I think personally I would elaborate a little bit more on what I've learned from my masters and my BSc. So I can talk a little bit about um, developing more of an understanding for human biology and um, developing more of an understanding of how disease progress progresses and how it occurs and um, I've learned some research skills and try when you can to tie them all back to medicine. So I guess personally I might say something like I've developed a lot of research skills through doing my masters and that has given me an insight into the link between science and medicine and how it's really really important to keep your scientific knowledge up to date as a doctor. So personally I might say something along those lines. Then the next thing I've written down on my list is hospice volunteering. Now this is a an extremely invaluable experience that I get to do um, and I have developed a lot of skills through it so active listening and um, communication skills learning to be more empathetic and obviously when you work in a hospice or in a care home or just generally with distressed patients um, you can often have very difficult conversations and through doing this I have developed those skills and I guess when I write my personal statement I can say that these are the kind of skills that can help me strive to becoming a better doctor. And something else that I've listed on my list here is Sage and Time course. And Sage and Time is essentially a communication course that I did as part of the hospice, which basically teaches you how to deal with challenging um, situations and how to communicate with individuals who are highly distressed and highly anxious. Then I can go on and talk about my shadowing experience. Now, I personally did about three weeks worth of work experience in two different hospitals, the first one being Guy's Hospital in London Bridge and the second one being Royal Surrey County Hospital. Now some of the things I've written down that I would like to talk about in my personal statement is for example the fact that I got to be in a, a couple of surgeries when I was at Surrey Hospital and 
especially seeing robotic surgeries and seeing like the incredible like state-of-the-art technology that goes into healthcare I thought that was absolutely amazing and maybe that's something I can kind of elaborate on the other few things that I thought were quite profound in these experiences were how much trust patients put um, into the doctor. So at Surrey Hospital, I actually shadowed the gynae oncology team. And obviously this is a department that people can feel quite vulnerable as there are a lot of like intimate, um, intimate examinations and you know, surgery itself can be like a daunting process for a lot of people. So I definitely learned a lot more about how to try and put patients at ease and how some doctors do this really successfully and they kind of have a sense of humor and they are very gentle mannered and they basically try and reassure and calm the individual so I can maybe talk about some of those skills and I know this all seems quite a lot but as I said at the moment I'm just putting everything from my head onto a piece of paper um, and then later on when I actually go to write this then I kind of have a bit more of a frame to work on so having said that Talking a little bit about some of the other things I learned from my guys experience, guys hospital experience and um, shadowing a number of oncologists, I can perhaps talk about uh, the involvement of the multidisciplinary team and I've written here my personal story and reflection because there is a story that really stood out for me personally and it was when I was in the clinics there was a patient who was refusing treatment and she was like very distressed about this and it actually came to be that the patient was refusing treatment because she was really worried that she wouldn't be able to care for her disabled son. So the takeaway message that I took from that is that, wow, like you really have to not only listen to the patient's like symptoms, but you also have to dig a little bit deeper and think, well, are they coping with this diagnosis mentally? You know, do they need to be referred onto the psychologist? Do they need counseling? Do they need family support? So that was something for me to kind of think, whoa, like this is really important. So that's something that I would really like to talk about in my personal statement. Now, the third paragraph of, I guess it doesn't have to be the paragraph, but the third section that I have divided all of this into is your extracurriculars and the kind of extra skills that you can bring to medicine. So for me, I have just written a few things down like mentoring at university, being a science club tutor, um, being a TMF partner and writer. And TMF is actually a website that Jack and I run together. It is currently in the process of being revamped. So watch out for that, I'll make a video. Then I have talked a little bit about my YouTube channel. And I guess I've written a few things here that I want to mention in this section. So I've written reflection and some of the things that I have gained from those experiences are confidence. I find it really rewarding. I've kind of learned to manage my time because you know, all of the stuff that I've mentioned, I've always done alongside either working a full-time job, uh, like right now, or um, alongside my studies. And obviously I've written written and verbal communication because this, this is me kind of practicing my ability to kind of verbally communicate with you guys. I hope I'm doing a good job. <laughs> but anyway, now this is a fantastic sell section to sell yourself. You can talk about societies that you're a part of, you can talk about sports that you play, musical instruments, projects that you're involved with, anything really, any kind of extra thing that you do outside of your academics that you think you have learned something from. Now this is a section that I understand a lot of people find tricky and I personally think that the key to it isn't just listing like a billion things that you do because I know sometimes at this stage people kind of panic and they're like I read books I hang out with my friends I uh, watch TV which is great but I don't think the admissions tutors need to know that but if you write it in a way to say in my spare time I love watching medical documentaries because they teach me to kind of evaluate situations differently or they help me um, improve my medical vocabulary finding a way to link what you do back to medicine I think that's the most important part. But yeah, I like this section because I think you can have a lot of fun with it. And I guess following on a little bit from that, you can talk about your hobbies and interests. Now, because a lot of my personal extracurriculars are my hobbies, the only extra hobby is art. So I think I will probably write just like a sentence saying, um, I also like to do art in my spare time because it relaxes me or something along those lines. Hey guys, so it's a two cent edit here and I'm filming this little clip to kind of mention something that I missed out and I can't believe that I missed this out but I didn't say a lot about my job and what I'm currently doing, for example doing the clinical trial stuff and taking blood from patients, I forgot to mention all of that. 
Um, so I guess personally that's something else that I would talk about perhaps under the work experience section or maybe I would give it a whole new section. So that's for any of you guys who currently are working full time in some sort of healthcare field um, then do mention that as well obviously if it relates to your medicine somehow. I was just very silly and forgot. Okay back to the video. Now, the last thing I have put on here, which is the fourth section, is the conclusion. Everybody's conclusion is a little bit different, but I think the way I would do it is writing a bit of a reminder of why they should choose you. So maybe I would say something like, in conclusion, I believe that my resilience, drive, commitment, etc., will help me be successful as a doctor. I'm a very individual, um, <laughs> I'm a very enthusiastic individual, and I believe I can bring this to medicine. Now, obviously, personalize this how you will. You can say, I'm a very methodical person and I can bring this to medicine or I'm a very logical person or I'm a very empathetic person or something along those lines but that's just how I would do it and I've written like a giant arrow and everything in bold and it says I will put these skills to use to make an impact on patients lives as a doctor and the reason why I put this is because I think sometimes if you write I want to make an impact or I want to help people then someone might say well you know you can help people by being a nurse or you can help people by going to research or you can help people by I don't know just handing out sandwiches to homeless people on the street that's still helping people so I think it's really important to explicitly say that you want to use these skills to make a difference as a doctor so that's it guys this is my personal plan and I'm gonna kind of make something out of this and put a personal statement together and also if you enjoyed this video make sure to like and subscribe and hang around because I've got a whole bunch of other medicine related videos that I'm going to make all right my lovelies I hope you're all having a fantastic day and until next time take care and I'll see you later